Hi everyone, I'm Dean Ramsey, I'm Principal Analyst at TM Forum. I'm here in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm on the Conviva booth with Jens in face-to-face -face meetings. Y yes, different experience after two years of <laughs> home office. <laughs> no more Zoom calls for us this yeah. week. But, um, so what, what are the, the key themes that you're looking at for Mobile World Congress this, this year with the Blue Marble portfolio? Uh, we see, we see uh, besides the pure product capabilities, we see uh, agility, scalability, modularity as being uh, some of the big topics uh, because we see so many things evolving in the, in the industry from uh, creating partner ecosystems, uh, 5G, 5G slicing monetization, uh, customer experience, and there are so many different aspects that operators are looking at that sort of really becoming very modular, very flexible in addressing them uh, is sort of a key thing. And that's what Blue Marble actually is, is designed to around sort of the TM Forum data models, the TM Forum APIs, which gives us sort of the framework of, of really being uh, very easy to adapt to very to specific situations and the needs of the customers that we that we see. I think, think that that part of the, the whole ecosystem is becoming a real focus for operators at the moment. And, uh, and, and you know, um, the commerce platform, how it links with order management, how it links with the rest of the BSS, using data as the kind of lifeblood of that part of the, of the BSS. Is that the Blue Marble seems to have all of those kind of. I hesitate to say buzzwords, but yeah. all of the kind of modern modern features of, uh, of, of that kind of solution. So yeah. it's, it, it, are you hearing that resonating with your, your Yes, operators? that's ex exactly what we see, like uh, moving on from pure connectivity and, and connectivity services to including partner services, uh, whether it's on the consumer side and, and typical examples today are the streaming services, mm -hmm. uh, TV services uh, that sort of create bundles uh, around it. That's where sort of we're working on the consumer side, uh, but also then on the on the network side, on the on the enterprise side, uh, to include network functions, uh, uh, creating 5G offerings for enterprises up to 5G slicing, where you sort of pull together uh, a number of components, a number of solution contributions, uh, and then create that into a package that is sort of a value proposition towards your uh, enterprise customers. And 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 uh, the product catalog is kind of at the at the center of all this. It seems that that as a concept within telecoms has been around for a while, but it's really coming to prominence now as, a, as kind of like the key way of, of defining business offerings and, 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 and making sure that the characteristics set there can be pushed down into, into the stacks below that. Now that's where, that, that's where we've seen, I mean, there, there was a lot of, I think discussion around product catalogs, but now we really see this to come to life mm -hmm. uh, because of the requirement of modeling very different things in the product catalog. Uh, and that's where the TM Forum specifications and, and data models really help uh, because they give sort of the guidance of how to model things, but there's still the flexibility to model all kinds of different things, whether it's really consumer products or 5G slices uh, or even totally telco unrelated things, they all fit into the same framework uh, and then you can use the open APIs uh, to expose these capabilities to different front end uh, applications. That's what we're doing in, in terms of enabling from the tradi traditionally assisted channels like agents to uh, still traditionally like web shops and, and uh, uh, mobile apps, but also now moving into new kind of chatbot things. And I think one of the keywords, also on Mobile World Congress was the metaverse, yeah. uh, where everybody is like looking really like a virtualized environment. And, and we see that the APIs really enable us to sort of serve all of these, these channels and, and uh, touch points in a consistent way. Yeah. From so, so talking about um, business models that are, are I won't say unusual, but they're not the typical kind of human consumer or, or, or human-based business model. What, what about IoT? I mean, how, 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 do we, how do we have to evolve our attitude towards a commerce solution and order management and product catalog and all those things to, to deal with machines rather than, than the human customers? Yeah, I think that, that becomes really important uh, because we see sort of the, the enterprise business models also moving away from sort of pure connectivity and especially if, think, if you look at things like 5G slicing mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you have the concepts of 5G slice with all the parameters standardized uh, but selling it 
to an enterprise is probably where you need to create a proposition uh, that not only consists of connectivity or the specific slice, but again, partner products, whether it's devices, uh, specific services that sort of create a bundle from virtual reality, augmented reality, where you sort of combine the bandwidth, the latency uh, to the headset uh, to create a, for example, gaming experience, and then you package this to sell that to a gaming service provider or you sell this to a uh, event uh, company or to a sports stadium operator that sort of gives a premium experience to their customers and they are not looking at the technical details of the slice but rather having a package of that again sort of where you need to sort of put all this together into a product catalog where you sort of look at it from a commercial uh, perspective exposing it to sort of a sales point uh, where they can sort of subscribe to that and whether it's the enterprise or also their consumers then sort of uh, can subscribe to and you have really a, a package to the enterprise to sell. Well, that, that's certainly in line with what we're seeing in our research. We've, we've recently done a, a, a large operator survey talking about, you know, wh where are the, where's the money going yeah. to be? Where's, where's again, revenue, new revenues coming from, you know, new revenues, um, not just uh, <laughs> revenues yeah. that are kind of cannibalizing yeah. old, old services. And so uh, I think that lots of those IoT opportunities that you mentioned are, are, are things that operators are focusing on, and you know, even on even on the consumer side, because it's, it's often the forgotten part of the, the IoT space. Yeah. Um, so, um, tell me a little bit about your partnership with IBM. Now, with IBM, we we, we sort of work together in, in terms of creating. They have. Uh, or we work together in creating sort of a telco reference architecture uh, and, and that from the IBM perspective is really sort of the, the complete network virtualization infrastructure and we provide exactly that sort of commerce product catalog component on top of that that sort of exposes all the capabilities towards either consumers or uh, as I said to enterprises and, and really enable taking the capabilities that are in that uh, environment uh, to uh, market and to commercialization and uh, sort of it basically has three layers one is the pure cloud infrastructure so certifying the whole uh, our whole solution uh, on IBM Red Hat OpenShift so it really is run very easy to deploy on such a cloud environment the second is then as I said like integrating that in the telco reference architecture and the third level is is really creating packages whether it's sort of a, on a consumer sales which we then or on the enterprise sales in virtualized networks for example which we can then very quickly bring to market and to clients uh, as a package uh, from the cloud infrastructure to the components uh, to the interface to sell them. Yeah. You know that I think within the the collaboration groups within TM Forum, that's something that we're seeing that operators are kind of specifying as, as, as a, a desirable thing. This this idea of um, partnerships with, yeah. with with specialists in in certain functional yeah. areas, and and um, it's you know ra rather than the days of monolithic single vendor solutions, the 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 open API system yeah. allows for all that to happen and the data to smoothly move around the system. And, and that has helped us actually in in doing the real technical integration is having uh, the team forum open APIs uh, on, on both sides so we knew exactly what we were talking about we knew how things had to look like and that made it very easy for us to sort of pass things from for example our commerce platform that driven by our uh, product catalog into a IBM order management to f then sort of drive it further down into sort of deploying it in the network right well it all sounds like great stuff I hope you have a, a interesting rest of the show and, yeah uh, here all week yeah yeah great Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um...